Some exciting DLC is coming out for Doom Eternal, so what better time than now to introduce your friends to your new favorite game? But how do you prepare someone for Hell on Earth? Are you worried that your friend might be too used to cover mechanics and recharging health? Do you think they might make it halfway through the game without using the flame belch? Fear not, send them this video, The Beginner's Guide to Doom Eternal, and get ready to watch your friend rip and tear as you look on proudly. I'm going to cover PC and console players in this video. Since PC is my area, I'll start there. If you're on console, or if your PC settings are already configured to your liking, skip to this time. First we need to address the people who aren't familiar with mouse and keyboard, but want to try Doom Eternal on PC. If you're unfamiliar with the world of shooters on mouse and keyboard, I actually recommend the original Doom first. No jumping, no looking up or down, just get used to steering left and right with the mouse and moving with ASDW. You gotta learn to crawl before you can walk, and walk before you can run, and run before you can rip a prowler's spine out of his back. Sit with the original Doom for an hour, and then check out Duke Nukem 3D. That'll get you into vertical mouse look, jumping, and some more fast-paced action. Once you have your bearings, it's Doom Eternal time. First things first, settings. Crank up that field of view to 120 in the video options. 120 is too much in some games, but in Doom Eternal it's pretty mild. I wish it went a little further, actually. Go ahead and turn motion blur off, nobody wants that. And I actually like to lower the brightness of the loot drops to about 65, but that's up to your personal tastes. You can even change the color tones of the game by adjusting the render mode. Don't mess with this until you've played the game for a bit though. In the UI options where you can change the colors of the HUD, I like the UAC setting. Customize your key bindings and set the first weapons to easily accessed keys. Get that weapon wheel crap out of here. The immediate keys are Q, E, R, F, C, and Z. Set the first tools of the game to these keys. Shotgun, heavy cannon, grenade, flame belch, melee, and chainsaw. I think dash on the shift key and jump on the space bar is fine for a beginner. You can change these later, but for now we just want to keep things close and comfortable. Console players can modify their button mapping in the options menu or pick from a series of presets. The game will give you quick tutorials on how to target the weak points of heavy enemies and other game mechanics, and you can disable the tutorials in the menu. I suggest that you keep them on for at least the first two levels because they're incredibly important. And finally, when you're in the game, if you return to the game menu, you can change the difficulty at any time. Go ahead and challenge yourself with ultraviolence if you feel ready, and if it's too much, knock it down when you need to. Some players will not be ready for the experience ahead, especially if they're used to games where they can just run around doing whatever they want. Doom is not a game where you hide behind cover and let your health recharge either. You're not here to carefully assassinate enemies, you're here to rip out the throats of demons. You need to prepare for enemies that will surround and gang up on you, cut you off when you try to run away, and evade your attacks. Low ammo capacity to discourage dependency on one weapon in the early game, to encourage the smart use of specific weapons to target enemy weak points, and to increase your overall accuracy and strategic thinking. Occasional platforming sections that, when mastered, will aid in your mobility and navigational reflexes during fights. Fast and evasive enemies with powerful attacks and oppressive high health support units. You may be used to sneaking up on enemies and stealth killing them in other games, or mashing melee when someone gets close. In Doom Eternal, your melee is not a damaging attack option. Don't panic and mash melee when you're surrounded. You'll eventually get the blood punch, which is good for a panic situation, but outside that, your melee's best use in the early game is to stagger a small enemy, known as fodder type enemies. Punching a zombie, a soldier, or an imp will interrupt their current movement or attack and cause them to stumble a bit. I like to use this when I miss a shotgun blast and I want to keep a fodder enemy there while I load the next shell. Sometimes you'll be climbing a ledge and a gargoyle is right there waiting for you and you can give him a quick smack to the face to get away from him. In the first level of the game, you'll get to pick between two weapon mods for the shotgun. You should pick the sticky bombs because they are essential to the early game. If you want the full auto mod, don't worry, in just a couple more rooms you'll get that mod too, and you can switch between them freely. You shouldn't think of your shotgun as a shotgun, think of it as a grenade launcher. When you charge the alternate fire, you'll see three icons representing three sticky bombs. If you shoot one, it will recharge after a few seconds and you'll have three again. If you shoot all three, in the same amount of time they'll all recharge at once. So go crazy with these things. You should be shooting sticky bombs all over the place, all the time. One sticky bomb uses one shotgun shell, so just go to town and blow up everything. 
Once you have two weapons, use the cooldown period of the sticky bombs to switch to the heavy cannon for a bit. Watch as I use all my sticky bombs and then switch to the heavy cannon to shoot a round of micro missiles and then return to the shotgun to see all my sticky bombs back and ready to be fired. The sticky bombs are key to fully enjoying the early game of Doom Eternal, especially for taking advantage of the weak point targeting system, as it will teach good habits of threat prioritization as well as accuracy which will help manage your ammo supplies. The Arachnatron in the first level has a very oppressive primary weapon. It's crucial to target his cannon with a sticky bomb, which instantly takes it out. The precision bolt mod of the heavy cannon is also great for that. It's highly recommended to get good at this, because it'll get you in the habit of switching weapons quickly and improving your aim. But you don't have to use weapons to take out the weak point of the Arachnatron. The game provides other solutions that might not appear as obvious at first. Exploding a barrel near the Arachnatron will break his weak point. The Blood Punch, which you get in level 2, will break weak points as well. Or ignore the weak point. Tossing a grenade and charging at him with a full auto shotgun will lock him in place because the grenade explosion will cause him to stumble. It's basically an instant delete for the Arachnatron. This grenade stumbling mechanic, called faltering, is great for dealing with large threats. A grenade makes a Hell Knight trip over himself, giving a moment to shoot micro-missiles at him or run in for a blood punch. And if you have a support unit like the Mancubus, who is incredibly deadly up close, a grenade falter will give you an opening to get in close for a blood punch to disable his weapons or a point-blank super shotgun blast. When you throw a grenade, it comes from your equipment launcher. You don't throw it by hand. This means that you can keep shooting while throwing a grenade. Take advantage of that to make sure that you don't stop attacking while throwing down a tactical grenade. The other grenade type is the Ice Bomb, which needs no explanation. It's amazing. Use it. Just remember to switch your grenade types so you don't accidentally try to throw a grenade that's currently recharging. You're going to take a lot of damage in this game, and there's health packs scattered around, but the best source of health is combat. Killing an enemy with a glory kill will give you health points. If you're very low on health, just killing an enemy any way possible will drop health points for you. So don't run and hide. Go in and take your health from the demon scum. A mid-range to close shotgun blast will put a soldier in glory kill state. Two shots from the heavy cannon for an imp or a zombie. Once you figure this stuff out, you'll have more control over your health supply. A very nice emergency option is the chainsaw. The chainsaw is how you get ammo in the middle of combat. Like health items, ammo pickups are scattered around, but you can take ammo from the demons at any time with a chainsaw, as long as you have gas for it, and there's always one gas point recharging. In an emergency life or death situation, if you have low health, a chainsaw kill will give you ammo and health, so it can be a real lifesaver. Understanding the chainsaw is absolutely vital to the flow of the first levels. Don't just burn all the ammo in all of your guns and then run around looking for someone to chainsaw to get ammo back. The chainsaw should be integrated into the flow of combat. When you're halfway through your ammo supplies, chainsaw a lone soldier in the room to top off. Make sure you're using different weapons and don't just empty out all the rounds in one gun. If you're about to get blasted by an onslaught of projectiles, use the invincibility of the chainsaw animation to escape. After you kill a couple big enemies, chainsaw a small guy in this moment of downtime before more big guys come join the fight. Notice that the chainsaw actually teleports you forward. You don't have to be in their face. From right around here, the chainsaw button will pull you into the enemy, just adding to the utility of using the chainsaw as a way to escape a bad situation. Once you get things like equipment grenades and the blood punch, use the chainsaw as a breather moment in combat to check the bottom of the screen to see if you have those things. And as you get better at the game, the chainsaw becomes less of something you use because you're low on ammo, and more something you use to manage the flow of the fight and keep yourself informed of the situation. Eventually you'll find the flame belch, which is the most important part of your shoulder mounted equipment launcher. Light enemies on fire and they drip armor shards. Kill them while they're burning to get plus 20 armor. Using flame belch is very important because you're going to get hit a lot in this game, and armor is your health buffer. Use it before you chainsaw an enemy in an emergency when you're low on health. Light a group of enemies on fire and then blow them up for a rush of armor. Even when you're playing really well with full armor, go ahead and burn groups of enemies to lay down reserves of armor to come back to when you eventually get hit. But keep in mind that heavy enemies don't burn long. You'll need to kill them quickly to get all that armor. With smart use of the flame belch, you'll stay alive much longer. And this is why I recommend unlocking the quick flame belch recharge with the sentinel crystal upgrades. When you find these things, you can upgrade your health, armor, and ammo capacity. 
If you unlock the health and armor upgrades on the upper left, you'll get the center upgrade as a bonus, and now your flame belt recharges much faster. Crucial in the early game. Next is the weapon swap system. If you're used to other shooters, you'll notice that if you start to reload a gun and then you switch to another gun, the previous gun will not have finished reloading when you return to it, and you have to start the reloading animation over again. That's not the case in Doom Eternal. Not only is there no manual reloading, when you fire a weapon and switch to another, it skips the cooldown animation. Let me show you what that actually looks like. If I stand here and shoot the rocket launcher repeatedly, I have to wait for the weapon's recovery before I can shoot another rocket. In 5 seconds, I can shoot 5 rockets. Now watch what happens if I shoot a rocket and then immediately switch to another weapon. See? I'm able to shoot the second weapon much sooner than if I'd waited for the rocket launcher to recover and shoot again. If I switch back and forth between, say, the rocket launcher and the ballista, I'm skipping the recovery animation of both of these weapons. And this is increasing my damage output, because now instead of just 5 rockets in 5 seconds, I've fired 4 rockets and 3 ballista shots in 5 seconds. Different guns affect this time. With the heavy cannon, you can get 5 rockets and 5 precision bolt shots in 5 seconds. This is called weapon swapping, or quick swapping, and it's how Doom Eternal is played on higher levels. The game encourages this somewhat with the implementation of the weak point system, where certain weapons are good for targeting them, and how certain weapons are more effective against certain demons. But plenty of players don't pick up on the fact that switching weapons actually allows you to fire faster. When you put weapon swapping together with grenade faltering, you get a beautiful combat dance that turns Doom Eternal into something we've never seen before. You start doing things like shooting a Mancubus weak point with a precision bolt, tossing a grenade while launching sticky bombs, and as the grenade detonates, you slide in for a super shotgun kill. It takes time to learn this kind of coordination, and you may not master it on your first playthrough, but it's very rewarding when you do. On PC, all this is very easy, but on console it's a bit complicated. Because of the limitations of a controller, you can't just press a button for each weapon that you want to use. You need to open the weapon wheel each time. It's a bit clumsy, and it'll become kind of tedious constantly switching weapons. You can get good at it with time, but it'll never be as smooth as mouse and keyboard. You'll want to set up your two preferred weapons by having them be the last two weapons you used. That way you can just quickly tap the weapon wheel to flip back and forth between them. You can fire the super shotgun, and then fire the ballista, and now you can flip between them rotating fire. But even if you can't weapon swap all the time like those crazy mouse and keyboard players, you'll find a comfortable system of using two or three weapons that you generally prefer and quickly switching to the appropriate weapons you need in the moment, and setting up quick switch combos between two weapons when you need to focus down a large enemy with power weapons. Some demons are weak to specific weapon types. Shield guys explode if you shoot them with plasma. Kako demons go into glory kill state if they eat a grenade or a sticky bomb. Hell knights stumble if shot with a minigun. Prowlers, which are really annoying enemies due to how much they run around and disappear with their teleports, are, in a genius design decision, locked into place unable to move or attack if you target them with the meat hook and will die from a single well-placed super shotgun blast. You don't have to use these weapons in these ways. The game just provides these options as ways for players to get the hang of the dynamic design of the game. For example, the shield guys. The first time you play, you see them and you'll want to use the plasma. The microwave beam totally melts them. But as you get more comfortable with the game and your options, you'll develop your own preferred ways of disposing of certain enemies. When I see a group of shield guys, I may launch an equipment grenade behind their feet and set them all on fire before it explodes. When I see a lone shield guy, I like to shoot a remote detonation rocket over his head, explode it behind him which puts him in a glory kill state. You can also instantly bypass the shield by using the chainsaw. Shield guys and gargoyles are excellent targets for chainsaw kills mid-fight due to how deadly they can be. Once you pick up the plasma rifle in level 2, the game really starts to evolve when it comes to weapon mods. It's recommended for a beginner to pick the heat blast mod. As you fire your plasma rifle, which causes enemies to explode and has a large ammo pool of 150 rounds, making it a great weapon to generally spray around when you're fighting, you'll notice that the three points in the reticle start charging up. When you have one of them, you can hit alternate fire to let out an energy blast. It's a great panic weapon when things get crazy, and if you shoot enough to charge up all three points, the blast is incredibly powerful, so much that it will break enemy weak points. This is a crucial mod to be using the first time you play. 
The microwave beam is awesome, don't get me wrong, but it's only good in the hands of a skilled player who understands quick switching plasma lock combos. So maybe come back to this one on a second playthrough and check out my videos on the microwave beam. As you play, you'll be earning weapon points, which you can spend to upgrade your weapon mods. Faster sticky bomb recharge, less recovery time on heat blast, stuff like that. They're pretty significant improvements, so definitely pay attention to this. You'll also get suit tokens, which can be used to upgrade things like equipment grenades, environmental resistance, how fast your dash recharges, and how fast you can swap weapons. When you pick up your first rune in the second level, you'll have a choice of 9 gameplay modifiers. Slow motion, extra life, fast glory kills, you can pick whatever you want. But I'm going to recommend air mobility. It may not seem like such an important thing to have, but trust me, the ability to change directions in mid-air is a game changer. Also, since it's your first playthrough, you may be someone that struggles with the platforming sections. Having the air mobility rune greatly aids in getting through these sections quickly. If you jump too far in a platforming section, you can just change directions in the air and correct. The Chrono Strike slow motion rune is also great for aiming. And I think those are the most important things to cover. I know it's a lot. Doom Eternal is a wonderfully dynamic game, and it really opens up with multiple playthroughs and stepping up the difficulty. I hope you have a great time with the game, and once you find yourself obsessed with Doom, there's a great community out there and plenty of other games to check out in this series. I have a lot more videos on my channel that talk about different strategies and systems, and there's several other quality Doom channels on YouTube. And by the way, if you're having trouble with the Marauder, don't shoot his shield because it makes the dog spawn, stay back until his eyes flash green, and then shoot him with a super shotgun, quick swap to the ballista, and back to the super shotgun for a 3 hit combo. He'll be dead in no time. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll be back soon with more stuff, later.